Hello and welcome to my second video in my Q&A series for AS and A2 level biology. This is another video that's been requested by Amy and this is the nitrogen cycle. Remember if you've got any questions about AS or A2 biology that you'd like answering or any concepts that you'd like explaining in a more detailed or more simple way, you can email me at uh, biologybyjp at gmail.com. So let's get started with the nitrogen cycle. We're going to look at four key stages and then one more at the end. Um, those are the nitrogen fixation stage, the ammonification stage, the nitrification stage, and the denitrification stage. Um, all of these are carried out by saprobiotes, so that's bacteria and whatnot, and we'll talk about specific examples of these uh, as we progress through each stage. So let's start by looking at nitrogen fixation. So this is where atmospheric nitrogen, which is N2, is reduced to ammonia by bacteria. Um, and one example of these is rhizobium, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now, this stage can occur in two different ways. You can have free-living soil bacteria um, that will convert the, the nitrogen to ammonia and then onto amino acids that they require for growth. And then when they die, plants can take up the nitrogen-containing compounds by active transport which is kind of useful for the plant. The other option is you can have this um, sort of mutualistic arrangement where legumes, so things like peas and beans, uh, they have these nodules on their roots that contain the rhizobium bacteria. And this is a, a symbiotic relationship, so both organisms gain from this. So the, the rhizobium produce amino acids which are given to the plant and the plant produces carbohydrates by photosynthesis which are then given to the, the rhizobium so everyone's everyone's pretty happy. So here's a little word equation simplified of course so atmospheric nitrogen is converted to realistically it's converted to ammonia first but eventually it gets taken up and converted into nitrogen compounds in plants. Um, I should also add on as well for nitrogen fixation that this process can also occur naturally um, when lightning strikes. So lightning can, can cause the reduction of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia as well. And this is sometimes included in the nitrogen cycle, but not always. So the next stage is ammonification. And this is pretty straightforward. So this is where decomposers, they convert the nitrogen compounds from dead animals and plants into ammonium compounds. So as stuff dies, decomposers get going and they start to do their decomposing thing and convert all of those lovely nitrogen compounds like proteins um, and, and urea and all that kind of stuff into ammonium compounds. And here's our little equation. So we've got nitrogen compounds in plants and in animals and they get converted into ammonium compounds. I should add as well that nitrogen compounds in plants, they can be transferred um, to nitrogen compounds in animals in a nice simple step, which we simply call feeding, which is where plants are eaten by animals. Realistically, that's an oversimplification because, of course, in between there we've got you know digestion of large protein molecules, then absorption, then sort of building new proteins from amino acids, but we don't worry about any of that. We just call it feeding. But that's enough about that. Um, let's move on and look at nitrification, our third stage. So ammonium, this is where ammonium, sorry, is converted first to nitrites and then to nitrates. And the bacteria that do this are called nitrifying bacteria. I should mention as well that sometimes they can use the, uh, the chemical equations for these. So nitrites are NO2 minus and nitrates are NO3 minus. And this whole process, these nitrifying bacteria, they are aerobic bacteria, and they just hang around freely in the soil. And here's our little equation. So ammonium compounds, first of all, getting converted to nitrites, which is NO2 minus, then again converted to NO3 minus, which is our nitrates. And this is these are both oxidation reactions. They release quite a bit of energy. And the two bacteria that I would like to identify that do this, um, the first one is nitrosomonas, which will oxidize ammonium to nitrites. And then finally, we've got nitrobacter, which will oxidize nitrites to nitrates. Now, because these guys like aerobic conditions, it's absolutely crucial that the structure of the soil, and the, there's good soil structure, and that the land, if you're growing crops particularly, uh, needs to be managed really effectively. So that's good drainage, nice soil structure for for 
plenty of little air spaces to get the oxygen in because what you don't want is you don't want to cut off this step because if you start getting ammonium compounds building up then things just don't really grow that well. The final stage is denitrification and this again is nice and straightforward. Um, this is an anaerobic step. This is where nitrates, that's NO3 minus in the soil, they're converted into nitrogen gas by denitrifying bacteria. So this is an anaerobic stage. Here we go, nitrates, that's NO3 minus, getting converted quite nicely to atmospheric nitrogen. Okay, so that's the four stages, and we're going to have a little look at the full lot all together. So, here we go. Atmospheric nitrogen becomes, eventually, nitrogen compounds in plants, nitrogen compounds in animals, they're both converted to ammonium compounds, then to nitrates, and then on to nitrates. Sorry, nitrites, then nitrates, and then on to atmospheric nitrogen. The question is, can you identify each process? I'll give you a second. Did you get it? Well, the green arrow is nitrogen fixation. The orange arrow is ammonification. The blue arrows, they're nitrification, and the purple arrow, that's denitrification. There is a pinky coloured arrow on there, which is feeding, which isn't a particular stage that you need to worry about, but I thought I'd put it on there anyway. So, one way in which humans are affecting the nitrogen cycle uh, is by using uh, nitrogen-rich fertilisers on crops. And this can lead to all sorts of issues, and one of the ones I'd like to talk about is eutrophication. So eutrophication is where you use excessive fertilizer and that fertilizer is leached from the soil into a watercourse when there's excess rainfall. So it washes away from the soil and into the watercourse like rivers and ponds and things. And this causes excessive growth of algae, which is a problem because it cuts off the light. And if you can't get light, the aquatic plants can't photosynthesize and they die. And this results in a lot of decomposer activity. And those decomposers are going to respire an awful lot and use up the oxygen. And with less oxygen, everything dies. So aquatic animals die, aquatic plants die. It's just not a pleasant place to be. So that's one impact that humans have on the nitrogen cycle. And I figured that that would be just about enough to uh, to try and explain the carbon sorry the carbon cycle not the not the carbon cycle the nitrogen cycle uh, in probably under ten minutes. So I hope that's been really useful for you guys. And remember. If you have any questions about ASRA2 biology, you can email me at biologybyjp 